So great parrots share many cognitive capacities with humans, including those involving executive function. So the question is, do they share the really important executive function, that of being able to inhibit impulsive behavior? And the best test of this, of course, is Michelle's classic marshmallow test. Now, those of you who are unfamiliar with it, what Mar Michelle did in the 1970 or so, he took 400 children thereabouts, he in put them individually into rooms, sat them down with a marshmallow in front of them and said, I'm gonna go run an errand, I'll be back in about 15 minutes. If you will not eat this marshmallow until I get back, I'll come back and bring you a second. But if you eat this one, that's it. You don't get anything back. And it was not much success, about 30 to 40%, unless the children self-distracted themselves by doing various things. The weird thing about this was when he went back and looked at these kids 30 years later, those children who had self-inhibited at four years old had much better lives. They, at every weather, which way you want to look at it, they went to better colleges, they made more money, they had fewer divorces. You know, it was really amazing. Interestingly, when people looked at children with low SES, they failed horribly. But when you ask the children why, they come up with rational reasons, like I didn't believe you were going to come back, or I thought my brother was going to steal it. But the real point of this whole you know, problem is that are you baked at four years old into what you're really going to become for the rest of your life? And a lot of people really don't want to think about that. They want to think that maybe you can make changes. So the idea is, could we have an animal model? So people started looking at apes, but they didn't use the classic marshmallow test. They did things with birds, um, testing for better rather than for waiting for more. The avian maximum, there was one crow that did wait for more for 11 minutes, but it was a corvid, so she could hide things. She could cache it out of sight, out of mind. So that's really not a great test. So we had great parrot Griffin, as I said, he's performed a lot of executive tasks. Could he do the marshmallow test? We tested him on the exact replica, except that we tested him on better. So we gave him a craisin and we asked him to wait for a nut. We gave him a nut and we said, you'd have to wait for a skittle. This bird would kill for a skittle if he could, and he succeeded. Any which way you want to look at it, he succeeded. Even on the longest task, okay, 14 minutes and 15 seconds, he almost made it to 15 minutes. We interspersed all these times. He never knew how long he was going to have to wait. And the important thing was he also failed on the appropriate controls. So we give him the better reward and ask him to wait for the less good one. And that's important because it means that wait is not a command. It's a choice. And the interesting thing really was that he self-distracted in exactly the same way the kids did. So you watch him. Awesome, so food up. She takes the uh, lick, takes the little lick and talks. She's falling asleep. He watches little eyes and he starts to close his little eyes and goes to sleep. This kid is kind of dancing around and you'll see Griffin, he starts to floof and he starts to you know, move around and do things to distract himself. Sometimes you just can't wait. And Griffin only failed out of 10 on 120 trials. So really that's, that's not, not too bad. And again, as I said, one of his failures was at 14 minutes and 15 seconds. So he really did. Wow. Okay, here's another one. She takes another little lick. He takes another little lick and he then puts it down. Here, this kid, you know, Griffin is turning his head around. He's preening. He turns away. He tries to distract himself in all sorts of ways possible. And here there's success and he gets his treat. Okay, so now would he wait for more? Well, no, he failed horribly. Um, he waited maybe a minute on one trial out of five. Most of the time it was like 30 seconds. So could we figure out a way of improving this executive function without training him to wait? I mean, that would defeat the purpose of the test. You don't want him to train, you want him to choose. So we thought about symbolic distancing, that is tokens. Could we use some things like a little wooden heart for a nut? So we trained him to make the association between small wooden heart and nut pieces. And you can see him learning this and he learned it for all these different variations and he always chose the more heart to get more nuts. And when we tested him on the delayed gratification using these tokens, again, he succeeded wonderfully. 
You show him two tokens, he waited for three. You show him three tokens, he waited for four. Again, he never knew how long he was going to have to wait. And again, he failed appropriately on the controls, which is really, really important because again, not only did wait not mean it was the command, but these tokens were meaningful. It wasn't just that he was sitting in front of these boring little pieces of wood. He knew that if he saw four tokens, he should not wait because you know he was gonna only get three if he waited. So what would happen with hedonic rewards? Well, preliminary data says yes, although we're only two thirds away from the, from the, um, through the trials, it really looks like he's waiting. And the point of this whole is that maybe these types of training can be used with young children. So thank you very much.